script is really, really well written. I think it's uh, really dynamic, and I remember the first time I was reading the script, I could not stop reading. This script is very, is very organic, you know, and nobody's good, nobody's bad, nobody's evil. We are just reacting to reacting and trying to solve all the, the obstacles and the circumstances that we have ahead. This story is seamless. I reread it over and over and over again, and it's a puzzle, this film. And if you take one piece out, it would fall apart. Vantage Point is a text that Barry Levy wrote where everything interlaces so clinically that it's very hard to untwine that and mess around with it. We often described it as this sort of onion where you peel layer by layer off until you've seen and discovered the whole movie. I was always fascinated with the Kennedy assassination. I was curious, what if there was a second gunman? What if we had someone on the grassy knoll? What if someone saw that person? What would they think? How would this all work? As I started kicking around the various ideas, I actually wound up creating this sort of grid for myself of here's the various players, here's the people we need to know to understand this story in today's world. There was the assassination itself, and then there was an attack. Um, five minutes after a, a bomb that was in a bag that goes underneath the podium. And those events were central acts that would exist in everyone. Above and beyond that, what, what perspective where someone saw it or heard it or felt it or whatever it was or knew of it, that each one was going to be its own animal. After I'd read the script and really loved it and got involved in the story, m myself and Barry spent a lot of time working on the characters and the way in which the story could be told. We were very keen to try to make sure that we show, if you show something again, that you saw it in a different way. What we've tried to do was work out journeys for all of the characters, so that each time you saw someone's story, you felt like you were getting a, sing a single piece of the puzzle. Three, two. I am standing inside Plaza Mayor in Salamanca, Spain, where crowds have lined up for the kickoff of what is without question a landmark summit. Well, an initial concept where, where I sort of wrote it down was, um, in my mind, if I was going to tell multiple perspectives, the first was going to be um, the news media, what, it, what you would have seen if you were sitting at home. Angie, what the hell was that? Not everyone loves us, Rex. Why don't you leave the punditry to someone who's paid to have an opinion? So go on, he's character in the script was originally a man, Rex. And when we got into the casting, we realized that we had all these great roles for men, but we didn't have a real central female character. And I really, really wanted us to have a strong woman in the center of the movie, and, and we made that. And suddenly, it, it seemed obvious that Rex could be that person. It was always important to me in the script, and what I think, what I hoped would work for the script, was that Rex was a character who had been there, done that, seen everything before. I mean, talked at a mile a minute, and was a character who, frankly, nothing phased. She's been doing this for a long time. She's very good at it. She enjoys it. She's been in all the hell holes, you know, all over. And it's really become, I think, a very addictive way of life for her. And she's just like a kid in the candy store this summit. I mean, I think she's doing all these shots and painting the canvas and quite controlling about what goes over the airwaves, and um, I guess you could say she was sort of a control freak, although I think she hides it well. When Rex witnesses the assassination, I think it really sh shakes them up, and I think by shaking them up, we as an audience understand, wow, if this person has been through everything, has seen everything, and it made them question things, that's pretty intense, and that then sets you in, in motion. Secret Service, I need to see your tapes. Yeah. Kevin? Yeah. You need to see any footage you have, the back part of the plaza. If there was a lead, Thomas Barnes is the lead character. Thomas Barnes is a character who struggles with his own demons from his past. My character is a guy who uh, took a bullet for the president, actually, uh, about a year ago. And this is, uh, when our story occurs, this is his first day back on the job. <laughs> and he's feeling you know, a little hesitant, a little, his little trepidations about being back. And then by becoming and rising up, becoming a hero, when he rises up from the ashes, he's actually sort of, you know, wrestling with not just today, but the demons that he sort of brought with him.
So the character of Kent Taylor, I mean, I think one of the, one of the, the main, the key questions I had for myself was how does each character represent a different aspect of the theme of point of view? So there's a character who doesn't know what's going on and is bringing his own baggage. That's his partner, Barnes. But for Taylor, the question is, I know what's happening and how do I keep up my, the artifice of what Shock. I don't know? I really feel like this is a guy that's been a sleeper for, for quite some time. I mean, he entered this the Secret Service with all the right intentions, and then somewhere along the way, um, something something switched inside of him, and he had the access to sort of another way of thinking, and something started to build within him, and an idea of being a sleeper, and 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 playing the ultimate card at some point, became what what he was really kind of obsessed about. And for him, I think right now is he needs Barnes you know, out there. He needs someone who is going to play Patsy to their, their machinations to make it work. For me, the Barnes and the Taylor partnership was always a kind of, it was a kind of father, son, bro older brother, younger brother relationship. It was almost biblical. It's like Cain and Abel. All right, I'll go check it out. I'm coming with you. No, no. If you're wrong, let me take the heat. Sir, did you film this entire thing? Yes, you Show me. Just show me. Howard Lewis is Forrest Whitaker's character. He's a guy going through midlife crisis. He's a guy whose wife and he is separated. And I think in the singular reason why, I think he's a guy who, you know, years earlier had taken the safe road in life. Family, kids, job, and never himself, never wanted for that adventure until it sort of became too late. And at some point he realized life was passing him by. Howard Lewis is a blue collar guy. It's kind of simple, broke up with his wife. Not because he wanted to, because his life has gone kind of bad and kind of not exciting for my wife and for this time in our life. So I leave my wife, my kids, and I go off to Spain thinking, you know, maybe I can find myself and find some passion again and feel like I'm involved in the world again and do all the things that she said I couldn't do. It's like the man who thinks he was going on a big adventure, but he's also a bit frightened by it. And he turns out in the story to be a modern day Abraham Zabruder, because he's a guy with a video camera. He's a little bit geeky because he films everything. And yet, suddenly, he's at the center of the biggest controversy in the world, and he thinks he knows who shot the president. And so what we were looking at was the balance of, I'm a man on adventure, and I'm also a father. I'm a guy who sees this girl, Anna, there in the middle of the plaza, screaming alone, scared, who am I? What am I going to be? Am I going to be the guy who saves her? Or am I going to be the guy who saves his one shot at adventure? And it's actually ultimately the sort of final question of his character there at the underpass is who am I? Well, I'm a guy who is family first. That was what was great about his character. It's like the everyman thrown into this nightmare world who thinks he wants to be a hero, but the way for him really to be a hero is to be himself. I'll be right back, okay? Spare me. I'll be right back. Enrique is a character who's, who's definitely evolved. I mean, on some level, the, the main theme of, of him, I think we began, was he was, the like I said, the local police officer, the guy who had some access, but not all. On some level, was, a, was always the, the patsy in the way that people feel like Lee Harvey Oswald was a patsy. But what's changed is really just how much of a patsy, in that on some level, he's a guy who is duped to believe that the woman he loves, who simply asked him for, you know, to bring a bag to the plaza, never would he have questioned what was in it, what he was bringing to the dance. And that's ultimately his sort of undoing. I feel like a completely stupid because I thought everything was love and she wanted me. And what she wanted is just to use me because I'm a police officer so I, I could cross the barrels with a bomb. And in one moment, uh, he feels she's betraying him and he's completely desperate. He wants to kill everybody because of her. ¿Qué has estado haciendo? Nada. Mirando a la gente. Sí, a unos más que a otros, ¿no? Veronica is probably the, the only character that doesn't have her own story, but she manifests a big s section of other people's points of view. And you discover, I think, a very complex woman who has a roller coaster experience throughout the film, going uh, into love, hate, revenge, killing, all that 
I think Veronica, what um, sort of makes her tick and what makes her an interesting character is that she is very much her own woman. Um, and, and from its very first days, Suarez, who is the mastermind behind it all, Suarez is someone who is, is an independent, but so is Veronica. I mean, I think that's what makes her interesting. She's definitely her own woman. Well, President Ashton obviously is, is the President of the United States. He's, he's a president who has had um, to struggle over the last year, both with, with the sort of albatross of global terrorism, but he's also struggled with the fact that there was an attempt on him before. And the question is, where is he going to root out? Is he going to become a hawk? Is he going to become someone who is militant? We wanted a president that you wanted to be proud of. A, not, a, not a, a Republican or a Democrat, just a good guy, a smart man who was moral, who was the president that you could feel you'd want to vote for, the man that you want to be the leader of the world. And so we worked really hard about that in the script uh, with Barry and in the performance of making him a man that's caught in a terrible dilemma. Because he puts himself in this position where as soon as he sends another man to take a shot for him, he's lost. Javier's always been a character who's had a really unique set of skills, but he's come a long way since the first time, since the first draft of the script. Javier is a special forces agent whose background is not, is not clearly specified in the story. He's like a ghost in the story. I mean, nobody knows where he comes from. Nobody knows exactly what he's doing in the movie. He's a man trying to, trying to react to the circumstances around him, you know? He's forced to do things he doesn't want to do. Initially, there was a love triangle that existed between Enrique um, as the sort of the duped lover um, with Veronica, where Veronica's real interests lay in Javier. And what it was clear was is that for Javier to have his own story and to, and to have a strong enough motivation that we would watch him um, take on the, the duties that he would be carrying out, it, it just became clear that we needed to look at alternatives. We realized early on that in, in the early drafts of the script, he didn't really have a reason. He's a bad guy, but he didn't have a reason for being a bad guy. There was no real story to him. So we came up with this idea that he had a younger brother that was held ransom by the terrorists. This is my brother! He's dead. One of the great things about the story is it's kind of like the domino effect. It's about a bunch of different characters that all do individual things, but they have no idea about how they're gonna affect the rest of the world. And each of those little acts has a huge impact on the rest of this story. Doesn't really make a political statement. This is really about, this movie is really about uh, personal relationships at the very, at the end of the day. People's own, own inner struggle with themselves. This is a type of movie where Nothing is what it seems. And I think that's one of the, you know, one of the most uh, interesting things about this, this story, this script, and one of the things that, that I like the most, you know, that it really, it really requires some collaboration from the audience to put all the pieces together and, and try, to, try to understand where these characters are, are leading them. I think it's really powerful. It's really, really well built. Every little piece you touch you have to retouch the whole script. So it's like uh, scaffolding, really, really precise and well done. And if you move a little piece, everything is going to fall down. Changing something in one story affects everything in another. It's that chaos theory, right? That a butterfly flaps his wings here and there's a tsunami somewhere across the globe. I mean, that basically is what kept happening. There was actually one moment in the script, um, Enrique, when he hands the bag, to Veronica. The question was, what does that do for us? Can he do it before he says something? Can he do it after? I swear to God, it was like one line of dialogue and one line of scene description. But every single time we did something different, it meant something totally different. It affected so many things that you're like, I never thought in a million years I would be in, 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 this, in the realm of this, this headache. The first draft I read when I signed on to the draft that we shot, 
There were some significant changes which were to do with the character development. But they were things that both Barry and me felt very excited about, really. So the president's story improved. All of the stories, we just tried to focus them. We tried to look at it and go, what we really don't want to do is repeat too many things. We want to have a twist in each story. We want to have a climax to each story. So we went through it and we're very trying, trying to be very meticulous about how we did that. I think that the final outcome is, is, is pretty extraordinary. I mean, for me, this is my first studio film. I mean, so it's been a wild ride start to finish. And I'm really so pleased with all that we've accomplished. Nothing is simple. Nothing is, you know, just as nothing is as it seems in the, in the movie itself, you know, I think that we, it, it, as a writer, you know, where you start and where it's taken, it, it goes into its own extraordinary places.